Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to the Relationship Marketing Podcast. Today, I'm excited to be joined by John Hanning, owner of Specialty Tax Group. How's it going today, John? Excellent. Good we've been connected. Friend. We've been connected for years now, so it's cool to finally be able to interview you and um, let our audience know, and even more people know more about the benefits of cost segregation. So, if you could just start off telling us maybe how you help your clients with the cost segregation with their taxes. Give us a quick summary of how you're helping clients right now. Yeah, so uh, cost segregation is a tax tool. It's an accelerated depreciation study. Uh, so when clients that own a lot of bricks and sticks, a lot of real estate, um, and they're paying a lot of taxes, um, this cost segregation allows for them to drive down their tax liability. So we're allowing real estate owners to keep more money in their pockets. I mean, that caught my attention. <laughs> when I first heard about this and I saw the tax savings benefits, I'm like, dang, how come I never knew about this before? Do you, do you find that a lot of people don't even know what it is or know anything about it? Yeah, that's exactly right. So 50% of my day is education, just educating uh, clients or even CPAs um, about, you know, cost segregation and, and the, the tools that, you know, their clients and taxpayers have uh, at their disposal is, you know, is 50% of what we do. Uh, the other 50% is actually, um, you know, exercising on that. So um, it's it's been around since 1987, uh, actually a little bit longer than that. Um, but yeah, not a lot of people know about it, even sophisticated, very savvy, uh, heavy, you know, real estate holding companies uh, are still trying to get their arms around this. So we're true specialists in the space. Um, and we say, if you can't sell cash, you know, what can you sell? So, you know, that's, uh, it, I, I love to be in the position we're in. That's that's really cool. And who who am I? If I'm watching this, you know, who am I that this should catch my attention? I know you, you know, I have a couple of investment properties, my wife and I do. So this caught my attention. Who else should really, you know, perk their ears up and listen to the rest of this and learn more about cost segregation? So uh, cost segregation is a tool that can be used by any taxpayer um, that has long life property or has, you know, a depreciation schedule with, you know, one building or multiple buildings. And so, uh, you know, in the 08, uh, 2008 downturn, you know, a lot of folks were picking up uh, rental homes or Airbnb is a, a new craze right now. Everybody's picking up, you know, five to 10 uh, lake houses or beachfront houses. Um, those are clients of ours. Um, but, you know, also, you know, it's the manufacturing company that has, you know, a couple of different uh, manufacturing spaces. Uh, throughout the Midwest or, um, you know, any spot that has, it could be a retailer that owns several locations or maybe a franchisee that has, you know, multiple uh, Wendy's or Dunkin' Donuts. Those are uh, perfect clients for cost segregation. Wow. And also I see, you know, a lot of people interested that come from like that own apartment complexes, right? And big residential, multiple, what do they call them? Multiple doors or multiple units? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, big, whether it's um, nursing homes or apartment complexes, uh, this works both for commercial property and for residential dwellings. Um, so yeah, anytime, um, you know, you've got, like you mentioned, an apartment complex or student housing, all of this is uh, if used for profit, subject to accelerated depreciation uh, through a cost segregation. Okay, that's that's awesome. All right, so I'm excited to get into this, um, especially for my own benefit too. I need to learn more about this too. And um, I think everyone listening here, no matter what size your investment in is, it sounds like you can really benefit from this. Um, so John, tell us a little bit about your business. Tell us about Specialty Tax Group. Um, just give us a quick summary about your business before I get into the questions. Yeah, so uh, especially tax group um, was built designed to come alongside uh, smaller or regional CPA firms um, to help deliver these, you know, this cost segregation expertise to their clients. Um, you know, the big four, uh, PwC and Deloitte, DNY and KPMG, they're already going to have these types of services in house, um, but there are some smaller regional firms that don't have uh, this expertise in house, and we come alongside them. Uh, to help deliver on cost segregation for their clients. Um, so we have about, you know, 10 folks uh, that, that work here at uh, Specialty Tax Group. 
Um, we're mainly in Atlanta, Georgia, um, but we have offices in uh, Florida and in Ohio. Uh, so we have the Eastern seaboard uh, kind of covered, um, but you know, we're strategically located in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, because Hartsfield Jackson airport, one of the largest airports in the world gets us uh, direct anywhere we want to be throughout the United States. So, uh, although you know we have boots on the ground here in Georgia and in, in, in the Eastern Seaboard, uh, we do a lot of work throughout the United States. Obviously, people have to, um, you know, uh, one of the, one of the, a quality study uh, will have a site visit included, and so we need to go and visit those assets. We can't bring the assets to us, right? So um, I like to say I have status everywhere, but but home. So I'm Diamond Gold Elite Platinum member uh, because I'm always on the road. Uh, and and I love that. I really, really love that because I've had access to some facilities that I would otherwise never have access to. Mm. And it's pretty been a pretty exciting ride. That's really cool. And as we get to know you and your team, you know, I want to encourage everyone to check out their LinkedIn page, which we'll link in the description. It's I love how you guys post the pictures of your team at conferences, at events, and even on site. So people can see who they're going to meet. So when you guys show up to their, you know, wherever the investment property is, you know, they know they're meeting with someone that they are going to probably like, you know, maybe someone they can talk golf with or some, you guys build those relationships with people. So definitely check out their LinkedIn. I love how you guys share the, the relationship builders there so people can get to know you before they actually meet you. Yeah. Yeah. We got a great group. Um, the culture is, is key. Uh, in, in a small business. And we, uh, I think, have nailed it uh, just, you know, some, somewhat by accident, uh, but, but truly by hiring the right folks. Uh, so uh, we get a lot of feedback from our clients that, that you know, so-and-so was a pleasure to work with. And, and that just kind of warms, warms our heart, really. That's what it's about. It's, it's not just about delivering a cost seg. It's about, you know, maybe even hand holding a client through the process uh, while saving money on their taxes. That that's really cool. And th that actually leads me to my next question is, you know, why are you guys different? And that's from just an outsider for me, seeing what you guys post on LinkedIn, seeing the relationships you guys build, um, I think is, is one of the biggest factors on what makes you different. Anything else you can touch on there that maybe somebody that needs this cost segregation, you know, why should they trust you guys and what makes you different to work with you? Yeah, well, so the partners here at um, especially Tax Group are, you know, uh, big four born and bred, uh, right? So we have a, a depth of understanding um, that, that is very, very deep. But being at especially Tax Group, it's really allowed us to build a better connection with our clients. So um, as we talked about, you know, delivering projects to um, the end user, it, it's really also about, um uh, getting out into their facilities and seeing what else is going on, explaining to them, you know, hey, this is called cost segregation, but here's specifically what it's going to allow you to do. Here's the impact it may have on your taxes. Oh, and by the way, you know, there might be some other tax credits and incentives. Um, I would have never known that if I didn't come out on site and, um, you know, spend a little bit of time with you. So, um, this is a, a very personal thing for us. Uh, we yeah. would definitely, you know, want to want to see the smile on your face, the taxpayer's face when, you know, we help them reduce their tax liability. Um, but then also we want to see those light bulb moments for them. You know, when there's a knowledge transfer, we don't just say here, here's the report, have a great day. You know, we sit with them, explain, you know, to both them and or perhaps their CPA if needed. Um, you know, the impact everything's going to have, they, they ask questions, the light bulb goes off, we can see it in their eyes. Um, that's, that's, that's personal for us. And so, um, how are we different? You know, I, I would say it's, it's through making per personal connections with our, our end users. Um, that's really where our passion lies. I really like how you mentioned that you look for other tax saving opportunities that maybe they weren't even thinking of. Um, and educate them, but you don't expect them to know everything. So you guys do the work for them. And I love how you said educate their CPA as well. So they're busy. And I think something that could even feed off of that, which probably does, um, is they're probably not one-time investors either, right? So once you help them with one study and one tax-saving property, 
they'll be calling you for the next one, I'm sure. Yeah, that's right. So a couple of a couple of things to unpack there. So um, you know, when when somebody buys an Airbnb and it works out for them, they tend to go right back to the trough, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we get, you know, although it's maybe a, a one shot deal for us on, per project. Um, we're generally building relationships that allow for multiple projects, um, multiple real estate entities or transactions. Um, the other thing you mentioned um, is that you know there are multiple um, credits and incentives allowable to a taxpayer. Um, although we're talking about cost segregation, you know, uh, I was on a brewery uh, tour the other day and doing the cost segregation on a $17 million uh, new build brewery. Every town has three or four of these at this point, right? Yep. Um, I look over and I see, uh, you know, some big beards and some jeans and graphic tees and, and you know, Chuck Taylors, um, you know, on a group of individuals. And I said, you know, they, they're on a tour too. No, no, no. That's my R&D department. Uh, so nice. there's research and development credits um, that may be allowable to those uh, folks. Maybe there's some state uh credits and incentives as it relates to retraining or jobs um all of that we don't expect the client to know what we know um it's our responsibility to deliver on what we're expected to be delivered on but also bring up these other uh opportunities and so whether they act on them or not at least they have them in their back pocket um we also uh, put the onus on us as to educate the CPA. Hey, I don't know, you know, telling the client, um, maybe the CPA has had this, this um, individual for a long time or this business for a long time uh, in doing their tax return, but they've never been out there. They never visited them. So uh, we kind of ex go back to the CPA and say, hey, look, check it out. Uh, they have all this other stuff going on. You might want to talk to them about that. So I think there's added value, not just for the client, um, not not just for us and added projects, but then also for the CPA getting to know their client a little bit better. That's that's huge. I want to get into the CPA real quick, but please tell me they let you try the beer. Exceptional. I, I, I those are the best site visits. I tell you, um, <laughs> having having access uh, behind the scenes and in a fresh uh, beer at the end of the day is uh, is the, the small reward uh, that we sometimes get to enjoy. I, I'm thinking of two, the brewery and maybe a golf course cost segregation. Like you got to try out the course too. I, I've done, I've done several golf courses as well. Uh, I, I do enjoy it. those site visits usually take about four days. Um, you know, uh, one day of stretching, uh, you know, what two days of playing golf and, and one day of recovery and actual work. So definitely, well, we need to get you on the cost segregation for the, for Augusta next then. Oh, sign me up well let's get into the cpas because you know for me i thought oh maybe i could just ask my cpa more about cost segregation but it sounds like cpas don't offer that or maybe don't know too much about it maybe they do maybe some do maybe some don't touch on maybe if i'm a cpa watching or trying to learn more about this what any tips you can advise them and i'm sure they could introduce you i know you do a lot of relationships with cpas you meant you started off the whole interview with that we work with CPAs. So touch on the working with CPAs as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, the CPAs are, you know, uh, individuals that know a lot about the tax code. Um, we are individuals that know very little about the tax code. We know the sliver of the tax code, but we know it very, very deep and very, very well. So, um, you know, whereas, you know, some tax uh, advisors or CPAs are going to have to be more generalist. So um, we come in and where some of them know of cost segregation, they just don't know the intricacies of it. Or some of them know about cost or have heard about cost segregation, but they don't know if this particular opportunity is the right fit for their client. So um, yeah, we come along alongside uh, them, provide education. I was at the South Carolina Society of CPAs yesterday uh, speaking on cost segregation uh, with an audience of about 50. Um, yeah, we, we like to pour into, um, our relationships, our CPA relationships, um, providing CPE continuing education credits. Um, but that allows them to help service their clients a little bit better, right? Yeah. It giving them triggers to 
understand, okay, I remember John said, if they had this scenario, um, you know, that might be the right trigger. So all they have to know, um, and our goal at the end of the day is just really for them to have a surface level understanding of, so they know when to bring us in. Um, and then we come in and, and we can take care of the, the heavy lifting and the details. Um, also too, our relationship with CPAs, we don't want it to be a barrier, uh, to moving forward. Right. Um, so we don't want the CPA to tell us, oh man, this is going to cost some, you know, it's going to be so much more work for me. Well, no, 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 hold on. We want to smooth that over. Right. Um, so we take it all the way through implementation. Um, although the end user, the taxpayer generally is paying the bill. Uh, we view the CPA that's having to implement this uh, as the tr as the true client. We want to help them as best we can um, to smooth out the process. We don't want them to have any additional work. So, um, yeah, that's our relationship with CPAs. Uh, they are the trusted advisor. They're if if they say yes, I think this is a good idea, taxpayer. Uh, generally, they do it. Um, so. Uh, we want to make certain that we have built that relationship with the CPA um, so that we're brought in when it makes sense. I love that relationship because you're saving them. It sounds like you're saving them time and effort, but also helping them make their client happy. <laughs> so, yeah, well, and, and two, if, if you as the CPA is not, they're not bringing it up to their client and there's a competing CPA that is bringing that up to their client, mm. uh, you know, that that could that could be a, a, a damage to the relationship, right? Um, so you know, even though you don't offer it in house, you do have resources around you to help deliver on these credits and incentives for your clients. So, uh, and and honestly, we want it's not our great idea; it's the CPA's great idea um, that they brought to the table for their client, right? Yeah. Um, so you know, if we're able to save them a hundred or $500,000 in taxes in a year. Um, that's not because we did a great job. It's because the CPA was educated enough to know when to bring us in. And yeah. ultimately they look good. Now they have a, a lifelong client because they advise them on something off, you know, with such a big savings like that. So that's really huge. Yeah. When you can put cash in, into a client's pocket, um, that exceeds your own fees, your, your lifelong client. <laughs> <laughs> no brainer right there. Yep. That's right. Now there's, you guys have tons of resources on your website. You guys educate people on cost segregation. Give us a quick, you know, overview of cost segregation. I'm a real estate owner. Let's say I have a, an apartment or a commercial property. Can I do this every year? Um, what exactly is needed from me? Give me an overview if you can of that process. Yeah, so we'll take uh, an apartment complex, um, you know, as, as indicated there. So um, it's transaction based. So if you purchase an apartment complex or you buy um, an apartment complex, there there is a transaction there and you can do it one time on that transaction. Uh, if you sell it, the new owner can then, you know, mm. do a cost segregation uh, on what they acquired. But it's not something you do every year. Uh, it's something that you do on a transaction basis. Um, I, you know, I talked about acquiring a property, but you can also build, you know, a, a five million dollar apartment complex. You can do cost segregation on that. What cost segregation is, and, and I, I love to talk about cost segregation, but generally, I'm not the coolest kid at the party, right? <laughs> I, I open up with I'm a, a specialist in understanding how commercial property depreciates from a federal tax standpoint. And people move away from me at parties, you know, um, but this for me is exciting stuff. Basically, we're accelerating depreciation uh, in, a, in the first couple of years. So um, we're looking for uh, when you buy a, um, a residential property, it's uh, depreciated over 27 and a half years straight line. Um, but we're looking for assets that are a part of that acquisition that are personal property that are depreciated over maybe five years or that are land improvements that are depreciated over 15 years. And we're, we're engineers that are carving those assets out of the original purchase price. And so when we do that, we're 
subject to uh, double decline balance and five year recovery period plus bonus eligibility, um, allowing us to maybe write off all of the five year property in year one. Um, though that's really where the power of cost segregation comes in. We're offsetting current year income uh, with additional deductions that you will otherwise not have in that front load. That's and I'm glad that you um, talked about you're not the cool guy at the party. When people ask me what I do and I say I do marketing, they put their head down and walk away too. So <laughs> like, uh, it's boring, boring but stuff. We're, we're we're passionate about it, right, Brad? We're passionate. exactly <laughs> that. And the simplest way for me was, oh, by the way, your your oven gets older over time as you live in your house, right? Or your refrigerator isn't getting newer; it's getting older. So when I learned about that, and then you add all the things up that are getting older, that's kind of simplified the thought process for me. Does it, is that the right way of thinking? So a little bit. So sometimes uh, there's a little bit of confusion there. So we're not talking about physical depreciation, the, the wear and tear obsolescence of an asset. Hey, I bought a car 20 years ago, and geez, it doesn't look like it you looked like 20 years ago, right? Yeah. And so physically, it's more depreciated. I would say... You know, since my 20s, I'm physically more depreciated. Uh, you know, uh, I my, my gray hair shows it. Um, that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about the recovery that uh, the IRS allows for an asset um, through tax depreciation. So, uh, yes, obsolescence and wear and tear is going to happen to an asset. And so because you spent $5 million on that apartment complex, the what the service is telling you through tax, federal tax depreciation is that we're going to give you uh, a portion of that as a deduction each year. Okay. Um, and so really that is, um, that's the focus. Sometimes people will say 27 and a half years um, for an apartment complex, that's not going to last that long. Well, you know, that you're trying to bring uh, practicality into tax law. That's not going to work, right? Uh, yeah. It's, 27 and a half years is the mandated uh, recovery period uh, for 1250, uh, you know, residential property. Cool. So, um, yeah, so that's, th there's a, a, a two different worlds, right? Um, in a cost segregation, we still have to look at the wear and tear of an asset. So, for example, if you buy a building um, that's five years old and it looks a little rough, it wasn't up updated, it wasn't kept up very nice, uh, the, the Parking lot has, you know, potholes all over it. We account for that physical depreciation. You're not buying something that's new. You're buying something that's five years old, plus, you know, has additional condition factors that make it seem even older. Um, so we help drive down some of those values in cost segregation. But depreciation, we're talking about federal tax depreciation, generally not physical depreciation. Makes sense. Awesome. Well, thanks for clarifying that. And I'm sure anyone watching and listening to this, ton of value there. And by the way, we don't have to learn it all. We'll just call John and he'll do it for us. His team will do it for us. So you've you've thrown out some like generalized numbers and some generalized you know people that you can help. Is there a case study or somebody that you've helped where you could share you know maybe what you what you did for them and how it helped them? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um... And, and I guess we'll go back to the apartment complex. Uh, it, it seems a, a good theme here. Um, we had a, a $7 million apartment complex that was acquired uh, in Florida, and we carved out about $2 million for land. So this is the non-depreciable land amount that you don't get to take depreciation on. Um, but that remains $5 million we did get to take depreciation on. Uh, we went in and found about $700,000 of um, five-year personal property. So this is anything that is, I, I say, it's not bricks and sticks. It's not the walls, floors, roof, um, everything that makes a building a building, but it is the fit and finishes generally. Uh, everything that allows the, um, the taxpayer to operate their business within that facility. So uh, and sometimes movable and reusable items or decorative items, those will all be personal property items. So we found $700,000 of personal property items. And then on the exterior, we found another $600,000 of um, land improvements. So uh, we, you know, that combined actually, so 
it also was bonus eligible at 100%. So this was um, wow. 2022. Um, and so the, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of, of 2017 allowed for 100% bonus depreciation. What that means is you can write 100% of it of those accelerated uh, or short life assets off um, in year one. So 700,000 plus the, you know, the, the, the 600,000, we had $1.3 million plus the depreciation on the long life property that would have gotten anyway, um, that created a massive deduction in the first year. So what we were able to do is actually eliminate um, the tax burden, all tax burden for the client in year one. And actually they carried forward uh, you can carry forward some of those unused deductions up to 20 years. Wow. Probably depending on, uh, you know, the, their their income in 2023 and 2024, um, they'll be using a portion of that in 2023 and 2024 as well. So um, a lot of income coming in. They're, they're a, 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 a taxpayer that was paying a lot of taxes, a lot of income coming in. But uh, all these accelerated deductions drove down their income um, to to nothing, and they're in the first several years allowing them to keep money into their own pocket. That was a That's great huge. thing for this particular uh, taxpayer because they wanted to exercise on another deal. So if they weren't paying the IRS, uh, you know, all this money, they had cash in their pocket um, to go to market to buy the next deal. Um, and in, in a time where interest rates are rising, um, that was a good deal for them. They didn't have to go to the bank um, and get uh, a loan uh, and pay the interest. They had the money in their pockets. So um, that's really kind of how we help um, particularly real estate investors um, that are, are, are really in an income paying position and, you know, kind of looking to grow uh, their real estate holdings. That's incredible. That's that's. Perfect story. That's what I was looking for. So, right. man. All right. So, why don't why doesn't everyone do this? Just because they're they don't know about it, or yeah. So uh, we we kind of go back to the education part of it, right? Yeah. Um, but it might not be a fit for everybody, right? Okay. If if maybe you're a um, a biotech company uh, and said, hey, look, I just built a thirty million dollar building. Um, we need a cost segregation, and I say, great. You know, we're going to use the additional deductions to offset your income. And they said, well, we don't have any income. We're not going to be profitable for 10 years. Well, then it's it's not a good idea to do an accelerated depreciation study. I don't want to create any net operating losses or NOLs um, more than you have, right? Don't pay for a study than not be able to use uh, the results of the study. Makes sense. Um, other, you know, non-paying tax, uh, non-tax paying entities, right? Hey, we're a, we just built a, a brand new um, school. And, you know, we're a tax exempt entity. Well, if you're not paying any taxes, there's no reason to drive, you know, uh, drive down income, right? Uh, so that's there. You have to, there has to be a, a specific scenario for this to work. Generally, most taxpayers um, come to us and, and know they kind of fit the mold. Um, we just not only qualify it, but then we quantify, hey, look, Yes, you are a good opportunity, um, or this scenario is a good opportunity, and then here's how much uh, the tax savings is going to be. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. All right, I'm I'm ready to sign up. I need some help. <laughs> I'm sure everyone has probably a few questions they want to ask you guys, and I know you offer that on your website where someone can schedule a call and get in touch with you guys. Um, I mentioned your LinkedIn would probably be an awesome place for somebody to connect with you and just start learning more about you and the team. Um, where else should somebody go if they were interested in reaching out? Yeah, so the website's the easiest spot. Um, but I, I like, uh, as we talked about, you know, we we like to try to create a personal connection with our clients, and they'll they'll be able to see that uh, on the website um, uh, and through LinkedIn. Really, you know, who are these people? What do they do? What do they do for fun? Uh, that kind of thing uh, really kind of brings it home. Um, and and generally, we work with with like personalities, so. Uh, if you find a, a cool picture on there um, and you think that's that's neat, uh, we'll probably get along pretty well. Um, but pick up the phone sure. and call us. Really, uh, our phone uh, our phone number is on the website and on LinkedIn. Um, pick up the phone and give us a call. We'd love to just talk through a scenario. Maybe there's not a project there. 
Um, but there is a connection and we might be able to, you know, educate, you know, the caller in some way. Um, down the line, there'll probably be an opportunity. At least we'll walk away uh, from the phone call knowing that, you know, we were able to give a little help out there in the world uh, today. And sure. I think those are, you can always drop us an email too. Um, we have several individuals on the team that that may respond. We work here as a team. And so even if you reach out to me, uh, somebody else might respond uh, because I'm out, um, you know, enjoying that golf course visit or, uh, you know, doing a site visit somewhere uh, at that brewery. So, um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us and, and we'll get you the answer you need. Cool. And that's why I was excited to have you on the podcast, just so everyone could see, you know, this is a cool business. This is a business that's really trying to go out and help people and build those relationships. So even if you're a CPA watching or listening, or you want to get your CPA connected with John and his team, like those referral partnerships are always great to have, you know, those referrals in different cities and different areas in the U.S. So I like the like-minded people connecting. That's always best. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, we have a great culture here uh, internally, um, but we want to have a great culture with our clients too. So yeah, that's, that's kind of, we want to work for people that, uh, that, that like and respect, um, you know, the expertise we're bringing to the table. So, but if John takes you to the golf course, that client golf meeting, you're, you're still, you're not going to let him win, right? No, no. You're I still... mean, the competitive juices are still flowing. Exactly. We'll beat you, but, uh, we'll help you save some money on taxes. <laughs> <laughs> John, thank you so much for joining me. It's been awesome. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. And thanks everyone for watching and listening. We'll see you on the next podcast. Give John a thumbs up. I'll put all his links in the descriptions below. Thanks again, John. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Brad.